Have you recently purchased a new or used vehicle? Or perhaps you're researching for a new or used vehicle, but you're wondering how to set up and use all the technology that we find in a driver's information system and the infotainment screen. If so, you're at the right place. Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and today I'm gonna to show you how to do just that. But before I do, take a moment to give us a like and hit that subscribe button down below. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Maury's 394 Hyundai in St. Louis Park, Minnesota. Welcome to our how-to video on the driver's information screen and the infotainment screen on the 2022 Hyundai Tucson, and this is the SEL trim level. So we're gonna start with the driver's information screen. Now this is a 10.25 inch, so it's slightly smaller than you would find in the Santa Fe, which is a 12.3 inch. But the, but the digital software is exactly the same. Okay, so you have your speedometer over on um, the left, and you've got your fuel gauge below that. And then over on the right, you have your tack. The, uh, the tack window is, it tends to be where little messages will pop up for you. Um, this will, of course, display your media when media is playing. Uh, it'll come down below kind of where you see uh, the fuel economy gauge. Up above, of course, you've got your, your some dummy lights. You've got your gear selector indicator. Over on the far left, you have your distance to empty. Then you have your fuel economy gauge. Then you have um, your drive mode. Unless you're in normal, then nothing shows up. And then you have your odometer. So uh, it's configurable, and I'm going to show you how to uh, configure and change things in this screen. To do that, we're going to use the buttons on the right side of the screen. Well, we're going to use this menu button right here, and then we're going to use this up and down arrow, and it's also a push for OK. So to start with, on the very top, you're going to see uh, the menu scrolling by. So there are basically four main menus. And then if there's a little dot that appears kind of over by that one by the RPM gauge, that means there's a couple more screens you can go to. In this case, it's two. Okay? And then if you want to, say, reset something, it'll tell you to hold OK to reset, and you just push and hold here. All right, so let's start with this one. Of course, this, this one's your driver's attention level. Uh, then the next screen is you're gonna be your some of your safety systems. So it's your uh, when your cruise control is on, which it won't turn on right now because I have to be going about uh, six miles an hour or so, or at least moving the car for it to come on. But that's where you would turn it on. Your lane keeping assist, all that would show up in that uh, picture area there. All right, uh, let's go over to the next one. Now you got three different types of drive information. So the drive info right here resets if the car is off for more than three minutes. Hey, the next one down gives you your trip information since you refueled. And then the next one down gives you your accumulated info. So unless you hit reset, it just kind of constantly keeps tabs. So sort of three trip meters. And then any one of them, you can just press the OK to, to reset it. You got a timer right here. That's the other thing. And if I press and hold OK, it resets the timer. All right, let's press the menu button again. Now, under here, you've got quite a few things. You can see that little white line next to the arrows. It keeps going down, right? So you have lots of things you can do here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start up here with driver assistance. So I just press the OK button. So speed limit offset. You know, this, this reads speed limit signs as smart cruise. And so what this does is allows you, to, when it reads a sign, to travel slightly uh, faster or slower than the uh, sign speed limit. So let's say it reads a, a speed limit sign that's uh, 55 and you want to go 53. Well, if you set it to th plus 3 here, it allows go 3 miles an hour over or up to 5 miles an hour over. You can also set it to go 3 miles an hour under or 5 miles under as well. All right, so I'm just gonna leave that at zero, press the OK button. So there are three settings for the speed limit. You can have the speed limit assist, and that's actually then going to read the road signs and adjust your cruise control to the sign on the posted speed limit. And it also uses GPS information. You can have it just give you a warning, or you can turn that sign reading feature off altogether. All right, let's uh, go to the menu button again. You notice it brought me back, so it's kind of like a back button. Uh, cluster, okay, here I can reset my fuel economy at vehicle start, after refueling, 
or manually. And again, you would just click OK to do that. And I press my um, menu button to go back. Lights. All right, so on illumination here, I can actually use the plus and minus here to set my dashboard brightness and dimness controls. Why you'd want to do that, I don't know, because it's it's right to the left of the steering wheel as a physical button, but it, it's there. Hit the back button right there. Uh, go back to lights again. One touch turn signals. You know, that's when you don't put turn signal quite all the way down, um, and it will give you either, you know, three signals or five signals and you just select the one you want it goes up to seven press the OK button to select that or go to off and click on there too all right use this back button here let's go to door for a minute okay you can set up the locks here you want it to automatically lock when you shift or when you're at a certain speed and usually that's about five to fifteen miles an hour somewhere in there or when you shift to drive all the doors automatically lock now it also does the same thing for automatically unlocking, except for it allow you to shift to park and it will unlock. When you turn the vehicle off, it will unlock. You turn that feature off all together and then you have to manually unlock the doors. We'll go back up here. Okay, then we'll come down here and you got press, uh, two presses to unlock. Okay, you can have that feature on or off and then the power lift gate can be turned on or off. And then the power lift gate, um, the opening speed, fast or normal. All right, the menu button, go back, go down a little bit more here. Now this is the height for your uh, power lift gate. So you can so full open, level three, level two, or level one, or you can do a user height setting where you just manually adjust it. All right, let's go back again. Digital keys. Now a digital key can be your phone or it can be an actual, it looks like a little credit card. Uh, you, if you hold it up to the door, it'll unlock it. And then if you set it in the wireless charging area, then you can start your vehicle. Convenience, right? You have a rear occupant alert, which will show up in the uh, RPM gauge when you shut the car off. You have that on or off. You can have the, the change the welcome light uh, to come on when the driver approaches or just have it off. Okay, we use this back button here. Wireless charging can be turned off. If for some reason, you don't want that. You can have an auto rear wipe and reverse. Again, just press the OK button to select that. And then you can look at your service intervals here and you can adjust them there. I'm gonna hit the back button here. You can change your units right here by clicking on the OK button. Gives you all the different units you can go through and change. And then you can have a reset button. All right, I'm gonna go over one more here. And of course, this is your, your all wheel drive system here. And so, Normally when you're driving, it'll it'll light up on either side of the tire showing you which tire is getting traction. And then if you toggle down one, you get tire pressure when you're driving. And then you're back to this screen. All right, now um, I'm gonna switch over a minute. In the center console, there's a drive mode button. And the gauges change a little bit depending on which mode you're in. So right, let, let's take a look. And right now we're in snow mode. So if I go up to smart mode, don't see a whole lot of changes between the two there, other than it says smart at the bottom. If I go to sport though, you get a nice look right here. I like I like the red. And then if I go up one to normal, uh, you kind of get the same display you had earlier, and then uh, back to snow again. Now, okay, so let's talk about smart driving for a minute. What is that? Well, the, the car in smart mode will kind of, depending on how you're driving, will set the mode for you. The nice thing about smart mode is if you turn, if you have it in smart mode and let's say it's in, it, it, it puts you in sport mode because you're driving sporty. When you shut the car off and turn it back on again, it's still going to be in sport mode. Okay. Whereas if you're actually in sport mode and you turn the car off, it goes back to normal. All right. So it does retain uh, the, the memory as to what mode you were last in. One of the features this does not have that the Santa Fe had was when we turn, put the turn signals on, there was a uh, blind spot monitoring uh, window that showed right up in here in the speedometer and the same thing with the left turn signal. This particular car does not have that. All right, that's it for the driver's information screen. Next, we're gonna move over to the infotainment screen. Okay, the infotainment screen itself is eight inches. It has a wired Apple CarPlay, wired Android Auto, AM and FM radio, HD radio, and Sirius XM, as well as Bluetooth. 
and through Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, you have voice command. Now, uh, it's uh, got a sound. The sound system itself is an eight-speaker Bose premium audio system. So you have all uh, capacitive touch buttons here, meaning there's no actual physical button, uh, but you have shortcuts to radio, you have shortcuts to media. Uh, this is a programmable button. You got a power volume, power and volume here. You've got a seek track, um, which will allow you to go back and forth between songs, say in Pandora or on a radio station. Uh, you got a setup button and then a tune and file button. So uh, let's go back here for a minute to uh, setup and then the home screen. Okay. So on this home screen here, you'll notice that I've got uh, media here. I've got Apple CarPlay here and Map here. If I go to this menu, I can adjust the left widget, the right widget, the home icons. Uh, so if I go here, say edit the left one, and I say I want this to be um, radio media. It's going gonna, it's gonna to stay what I have playing because that's what's playing currently. But if I had the radio playing, that's what would show there. So for instance, if I went to radio and then I went back to home, now my radio shows up there. Okay, if I edit the right widget, let's say I want a clock there, puts a clock in the right widget. If I go over here and I say I want to edit the home icons, okay, now I can um, edit what goes in here. So if I want radio, for instance, to go down where phone is, I can replace that. Okay, quiet mode might, might be a nice one to have uh, right away. Okay, so if I do that and I just go, uh, let's see, back to home. Okay, now my quiet mode is the first button that shows up. So you're rearranging these these icons down here, which is a nice uh, feature to have. Okay, uh, so now if I uh, if I um, Go back here for a minute to set up here. This is where you can see all the basic icons that uh, of things that you can adjust. Uh, so if you want to get straight to sound, you can go here and adjust this. Now, um, like the uh, uh, Santa Fe, you have to click in the squares, but if you want to incrementally adjust, then you can use the arrows. And then this button centers everything again. You got your uh, bass and treble mid-range right there. This button will zero everything out. Uh, you can, um, if you do this is check mark here, you can, it'll lower air, all the volumes that are currently playing in the car when a safety warning comes on. Also, uh, if this is check marked, then um, when the parking assist view is active, it turns the volume down on everything. Uh, just a little easier to concentrate. You want to change the volume on something else? Well, system volumes is where you want to go. So beeps, you can adjust, ringtones, voice prompts, and again, you can just click on it or you can drag. And then you can reset them all right there. And then you can turn the beep off completely on the screen. Okay, uh, if I look at connected device volumes, so I can look at Apple CarPlay here, and I can adjust media and phone volume. I'm going to go back here, go back again. Startup volume limit. Okay, so what it will do is it's factory preset to a certain level when the car starts up, but if that's too much for you, you can check mark that and then it will lower it. All right. And then you have, you can adjust radio noise, the original sound, you get minimum noise reduction or max. Uh, noise reduction. And then you can reset. All right. If I click on the menu button, I'll get the uh, a, a user's manual on the web. Of course, it's always easier just to watch our video. I'm going to press the home button again. All right. So, uh, right now we have the split screen, right? And uh, we are in radio. If I press the radio button, I get full screen. So let's talk a little minute about the, the, the uh, how to preset the channels um, to make them favorites and that kind of stuff. So um, if I'm on a particular channel, so I can go here and I can just type in a channel. Let's go to channel 12, don't know what it is. Press OK. Now, to, to set that as a favorite, I just click on the star. Okay. If I want to scan, 
I can turn that on and it's going to scan through different stations for me and give me a couple seconds on each one and then it switches. Okay, if I want to look at the band, I can look at, I can click Sirius XM, Sirius XM, AM, or FM. Okay, and then if I press the menu button, I can turn the display off, look at the channel list, what is on my presets, featured favorites, or delete presets. Now, if I hit, if I hit the delete presets, it brings up and say, do you want, you know, here's your presets, do you want to, which one do you want to delete? Okay, of course, then you've got a play button here. If you just start thing, you can skip forward, skip backwards. There's a, a time counter, and then it gives you your presets right in here. So let, let, let's switch from it to FM. You're going to notice that it's set up the same way as Sirius XM was. You want to make a channel a favorite? Just go here. Adds it right over here. You want to change stations? You can just click on that arrow, and you're tuning, you notice, by, you know, just by the next digit. You want to scan, you can do that. So it's set up the same way, and uh, AM is set up the same way. So they've made it nice in that all your radio stuff is set um, set up the same way. So you can scan, you can seek uh, different tracks. Now you can also use these buttons here. So if I hit the track number, it, you know, seek button, seek will go, uh, you know, skip stations and try to find one that's working. Track will go forward and do the seek. And it works the same thing. There's your HD radio button. So if I wanted HD radio, I could turn that on. All right, so that is how your uh, radio stuff works. Now, if I want to go to uh, Apple CarPlay, which I have hooked up, okay, if I go to all menus, I can go to Apple CarPlay right here. And there I am. And of course, you got your, uh, uh, if I click right here, I get um, all my uh, apps that will work. And lots of different navigation. You, I got Waze there. I've got Google Maps. Uh, I got Apple Maps somewhere right there. Um, but and if I go down one more screen backwards, it gives me a split view. Okay. So um, the thing you should be aware of is that when you're uh, when you hook up your your phone, it'll ask you if you want to use Apple CarPlay. If that's the case, that's what it will use instead of Bluetooth, which is no big deal. It's just not going to use a Bluetooth streaming. And uh, because it is a wired connection, you're going to get a little better audio quality. I do like that it's full screen. I really like that. Okay. Now, um, if I press the media button, I just get right to this window here. I can reorder the icons if I want. If I want this to be first. Got to push. Oh, now I got to push again. So you got to push to select it, and then you got to push again to drag it. But then I can... Uh, order these in the order that I want. Press OK. And then Apple CarPlay is first. All right, let me go back to close here for a minute. Uh, I'm going to go to my favorite button here. This one is programmable. So this, uh, let's see, we can have it home, quiet mode, or display on or off. Phone projection, you got to take it, uh, show your phone, Bluetooth audio, Blue Link services. So let's say I set it to quiet mode. Well, in quiet mode, uh, the car automatically uh, turns off the rear speakers and keeps the volume of the system uh, to no louder than seven. So if I do that, and now I press this button, I'm in quiet mode. I press it again, it's off, okay? So you can program that favorite button right there. All right, um, let's go back to setup for a minute. And uh, we talked about sound, uh, display, this is going to be another place where you can adjust some things like the, the, the brightness of the screen. Usually automatic works the best, but if you want it always bright, you can choose uh, uh, daylight. If you want it always a little bit darker, you can choose night. Um, you can link it to the cluster illumination control. So if I go over on my far left of my steering wheel and I adjust, now my uh, driver's information screen and infotainment screen uh, will dim or brighten at the same time. You do have a blue light filter, okay? So if you like using that, you can use that there. I have to check it to turn it on, and then I can adjust it. There are some more settings down here that you can look at. You can actually even schedule a time. Screen saver, you can have a digital clock or an analog clock. On your home screen, you can uh, edit this. So if I go like this, 
now I can say um, I want a clock. We, we saw this a little bit before, but now, now the clock is there. So if I go to home, there's my clock. So it's another way to edit the screen. Right? Um, down here, you can uh, extended rear camera use. Uh, if that's check mark when, you, when you're in reverse and then you put it back to drive, the rear camera stays on up to about five miles an hour, then it turns off. If that's checked off, then the minute you put it to drive, the camera goes off. Right, let's go back here. Okay, button. Well, that brings us to these buttons here. Now, this button right here is on the steering wheel. Uh, and if you do that one, it's another star. looks just like this one. It's just another star. You can set that to do uh, nothing, reject or end a call, change hands-free calling device, privacy mode, or a voice memo. And it will only do one thing. Okay, um, now the mode button on the steering wheel can be set to do multiple things. And I can, I can say I want it to do FM, AM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth audio, USB music, which won't show up unless I have a USB hooked, and phone projection. So that, again, would be Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Now when I press that mode button, Sirius XM, Apple CarPlay, and then FM, and then AM. So it toggles me through all my media sources. And if you only want to use two of those, well, turn the other ones off. Uh, but it's nice that they give you three customizable buttons in the car. Under general, this is where you can look at some system information here. Uh, you can set the time and date right here. You can change languages here. Uh, right here, you can set the type of keyboard you have. And then uh, Blue Link Services, that's right there. You can do Wi-Fi, set that up, because it does have a Wi-Fi hotspot. And then uh, on climate settings here, you can make a few settings here, like recirculate air. You want that to happen if you use the windshield wiper fluid. Automatically prevents the washer fluid scent from entering the cabin. Automatic ventilation. Well, you can have auto dehumidify, and you can schedule ventilation. And then your defog and defrost, you can turn those on. Okay, if you turn them on, then it increases the fan speed, does a bunch of other stuff. Um, and you can read that description right there. But it's nice that they put that right there for you. Let's hit the back button again. And we'll hit the back button again. And we'll hit... Now, I'm going to go back to this menu button for a minute because... That's always present, you always see that, and it just, what it shows depends on the screen that you're on, but it's in some extra options. In this case, it just brings us, again, to the user manual. Okay, you cannot slide back and forth anywhere on the screen. This is it, okay? There aren't any extra screens. Um, but, you know, I think it's well laid out. I mean, I can instantly go to radio, and then from there, I can select the different bands of radio that I want. Or I can go over here to media if I want more choices. And I have uh, Apple Car because I don't have Bluetooth. I don't have a USB hooked up. If I did, that would show up. Okay, click on that, and there comes my Apple CarPlay, and which is where I think I would leave it. You got a nice favorite button that you can have change two things, and uh, plenty of uh, capacitive touch buttons that you can uh, quickly access uh, seeking radio stations. You can also do that from your steering wheel, though. And that's really the easiest place to do it, and that's on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. Uh, okay. Boy, that, that is it uh, on the infotainment screen. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.